If you need high specification resources to run computations but don't have the resources to upgrade your system, then there's a lot of resources out there that would provide you the means to spin up a computer with high memory or with a powerful GPU to perform those computations remotely on the cloud. And the best example for that would be the GitHub code spaces. You can access the GitHub code spaces from this link that says github.com slash features slash code spaces. And here you can see that it is a fully configured development environment in the cloud that starts in seconds for up to 60 hours a month free. So you have a free tier as well that provides you 60 hours a month for free. Then you can see that in this cloud development environment, just like all others, we have one page for the editor and we also have a browser to view our development side by side. So this environment is best suited for applications having the user interface, just like web applications or Streamlit app. Moreover, you also have different editors in which you can write your code, which are the uh, VS code, the JetBrains, Jupyter Notebook, Terminal, etc. So this cloud development environment will allow you to write your code in any of these editors on the GitHub code space and then you can sync all of your work on any system you want. Then if we talk about the computation resources, then it says that it is faster than your computer because the CPUs are up to 32 cores, the memory is up to 64 GBs and the spin up time is less than 10 seconds. So here you can see that we have five different options for the cores. And for each core, you can see that the RAM is almost double in size. So depending upon your computation requirement, you can select the required core from these options. Then you also have the option to customize your development environment as well. And this can be done by writing simply a few lines of code. Then you also have the option to set the theme or the visualization of your code editor on the GitHub code spaces. You can select the light, dark or any other version that you want. Then you also have the option for the browser preview where you can view your applications on the browser inside a new tab. So this is all about the GitHub code spaces. Now in order to access it, you have to go to your GitHub account. And once you are on the page, you have to click on this plus button that says create new. And when you click it, a drop down menu will appear where you will have the option to create a new code space. Once you do that, you will have the option to create a new code space. And firstly, you have the option to select the repository that you want to be cloned into your code space. So right now, these are all the repositories that are present inside my GitHub account. So you can select any of the one present in your account to be cloned into the code space. But if you don't want any repository to be cloned into your code space, then there is another option as well. Simply have to go to github.com slash code spaces and hit run and then you will land on the page that looks something like this here you have the option to create a code spaces in the github without attaching it to any repository so here you have some quick start templates that you want to use either you can use a blank template or you can use a template if you want to create a react application if you can also use the jupyter notebook if you want to have an interface just like jupyter notebook or for the dotnet environment and there are some other templates as well which are for the django the express flask preact and so on so for this video i'm gonna use the blank template and once you do that you will see that your blank code space has been created and by default the code editor for the github code spaces is the VS code. You can also select any other editor by going to the settings of your GitHub code spaces account. So firstly, I am going to change the theme to dark. So this is the interface of the GitHub code spaces with VS code as the default editor. Here is the terminal from where you can add different libraries and extensions into your project. So let's create a new Python file here. I'm going to call it app.py and this is my file. In this file, I want to create a streamlit application. So just like you can install different libraries into your IDEs, you can also install them using the pip command here in the code spaces as well. So I'm going to say pip install streamlit. Okay, then hit enter and you will see that streamlet will start downloading and the speed of the internet will be much faster than the speed on your local system. Alright, so the streamlet has been successfully installed. So now I'm going to go ahead and write the code into my app.py file. So here I have code for the streamlet application frontend. 
Here firstly, I am importing the streamlet as ST. Then I am setting the page configuration, the title and the subtitle and I am creating a file uploader where the user can upload the CSV file and then there is a button. So now I am gonna go ahead and run this application and it will be done in the same way just like you run a streamlet application inside your IDE. So I'm gonna say streamlet run app.py. Hit enter. It will provide you the link for your application and will say your application running on the port 8501 is available. So if you click on open in browser, a new tab on the browser will be opened and it will display us the interface that we have just created using the streamlet library. So you can simply write the code on one tab and then view its output on the other tab within the same browser. Okay, so now let's go ahead and close this and I'm gonna create a new file. I'm gonna call it visualization.py and in this file I am going to write the code that will visualize the data in the form of some graph. So I'm gonna open a new tab and I'll head to the scikit-learn. Here you have multiple examples. You can select any of the one. I'm going to go with this one. And from here, firstly, you have to see that these are the three libraries that will be installed, which are the sklearn, numpy, and matplotlib. So I'm going to head back to my code space. And in order to run the already running application, I'm going to press Ctrl C. And you will see that the previous streamlit application, which was running, has been stopped. So firstly, I'm going to say pip install scikit-learn and then scikit-learn will be installed into our system. Now nextly, I am going to import pip install numpy and then I am gonna install matplotlib. Alright, so now all of the required libraries have been successfully installed into our code spaces. So now I'm gonna go ahead to this page. So I'm gonna come back and paste all of the code here. And instead of plt.show, I'm gonna use plt.savefig function. I'm gonna call it figure. And you also have to provide the extensions. So I'm gonna give it png. Then you have to provide the dimensions. So I'm gonna give it 450. Alright, so now once this is done, I'm gonna go back to my terminal and run the file by saying python and then provide the name of my file which is visualization.py and you will see that our project has been successfully executed and here we have an image that says figured. If you click on it, you will see the graph that we have plotted using the code inside our visualization.py file. Okay, so that's a really cool thing that you can easily install the libraries into your code spaces just like you can do in the IDEs and perform different visualizations and write code for different applications. Now if you go back to your code spaces you will see that this is the code space that we have created and we have used the 1.18 GB out of the 8 GB. So from here I want to show you that the code spaces project that you have just created can also be stored inside a repository on your account as well. For that you have to click on these three dots and you can click on the option that says publish to a new repository. Once you do that you will have the option to give it a name and you can also select the visibility so I'm going to set it to public and then click on create repository. Okay, so now it says that code space is stopped and if you go to your GitHub account, you will see that a new repository by the same name will be created and inside this repository, you will have all the files that were created inside your code spaces. So here, this is the first app.py file, which is actually a streamlit application. Then we have a visualization.py where we use the scikit-learn, numpy and matplotlib to perform data visualization and this is the visualized file. Okay, so let's restart the code space. Okay, so now I'm gonna close all of these files and I'm gonna show you an interesting thing. If you go to this path that says github.com slash streamlit slash LLM examples, you will have the code for a pre-built LLM application and if you scroll down, you will have the option to directly open it in the GitHub code spaces and all the information about the configuration and the required file is stored inside this .dev container folder. So if you click on the open in GitHub code spaces, it will give you the option to create a new code space. I'm going to do that. And once our code space is being created, I'm going to go to my all code spaces page and I am going to stop this code space because if the code space keeps on running, that it will use all your free hours that are provided to you by default. Alright, so now the, the previous code space was stopped because we want to save the resources. 
and this is a new code space which is being created using the LLM example which is present on the Streamlit GitHub account. Alright, so new code space for the code has been created and if you go to this dev container, it have a dev container.json file that contains the required configuration files and the port information, the post create commands, the port attributes and everything that is needed to run it. Alright, so once the application runs, you will have a simple browser open within the code space and this is the interface of this application which is actually a streamlit chatbot powered by OpenAI LLMs. So this application is just like ChatGPT where you can provide the different prompts and it is going to generate the response for you. Alright, so that's a really cool thing that the application can be viewed inside a simple browser which opens within the code spaces and it can also be opened inside a new tab on the same browser. So you can see that the GitHub code spaces is very simple and easy to use and you can spin up a high specification cloud development environment in just a few seconds. So I will highly encourage all of you to try GitHub code spaces on your own if you want to access the high specification resources on the cloud development environment.